Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at PCIe adapter cards and external USB enclosures for M.2 SSDs. These can be very useful if you've got one M.2 slot in a computer and you need to clone the drive in it to another M.2 SSD, or maybe you want to use an M.2 SSD in a computer without a free slot, or maybe no M.2 slots at all. So, let's go and get started. There are various ways to add an M.2 slot to a computer. However, before we open up some hardware, it's important to note that M.2 is a type of physical connector and not an interface. Rather, an M.2 slot may be equipped with many different interfaces, which include USB, SATA and PCIe. M.2 SSDs may have either a SATA or a PCIe interface. PCIe M.2 SSDs use a data transfer protocol called MVME or Non-Volatile Memory Express. So, when you buy an M.2 SSD, it will either be SATA, like this integral drive, or PCIe MVME, like this drive from Western Digital. The M.2 slots on some but not all desktop PC motherboards can support both NVMe and SATA SSDs. However, the majority of M.2 SSD enclosures and adapter cards are either PCIe NVMe or SATA only, so it's very important to get an enclosure or an adapter card with the right interface for your SSD. With all this noted, let's do some unboxing and we'll start with the PCIe cards I purchased, which illustrate the kind of hardware that's available. These are from Glowtrends, and both of the cards here have one PCIe NVMe M.2 slot. So, what's the difference? Well, let's bring in Stanley the Knife, open them up, and take a look. And uh, there we go, we have our two cards, and they look uh, very similar, they both got their M.2 slot here, and uh, this card actually comes with a heatsink. But the critical difference is that they have different PCIe, or Peripheral Component Interconnect Express, interfaces. Specifically, this is a times 4 card, and this is a times 1 card, so what does this mean? Well, the PCIe slots on desktop PC motherboards come in a number of sizes that offer either 1, 4, 8 or 16 lanes. The more lanes, the more data can be transferred in parallel, the same way that a four-lane highway can carry more traffic than a single-lane road, even if the cars drive at the same speed. Modern M.2 NVMe SSDs are designed to use four PCIe lanes. So, for the drive to operate at full speed, a PCIe adapter needs to have four lanes, or in other words, to be a Times4 card. Times4 cards can be fitted into a Times4, Times8, or Times16 PCIe slot. However, many PCs are only equipped with one Times16 slot and one or two Times1 slots. And if, as here, the Times16 slot is occupied by a graphics card, the only option is to use an M.2 NVMe adapter with less than four lanes. And this is why I purchased this Times1 Glowtrends adapter card, as this can be fitted in any PCIe slot from Times1 to Times16. And it currently costs $9.90 in the US and £8.99 in the UK. So it's a really handy piece of kit to have around, even though it won't allow an M.2 NVMe SSD to operate at full speed. The second card I purchased cost $11.55 or £13.99, and it is times 4 as I've noted, so this does offer 4 PCIe lanes. However, whether or not it will allow an NVMe SSD to operate at full speed will depend on the PCIe generation of both the SSD and the PC motherboard. As we can see in this table, PCIe has progressed through 5 available generations 
with some PCIe 6.0 hardware expected to launch in 2024. However, right now, all NVMe SSDs have either a PCIe 3.0, 4.0 or 5.0 interface, whilst available motherboard slots are PCIe 4.0 or below. This means that the maximum speed of an NVMe SSD over a PCIe 3.0 interface is just under 4 GB a second, whilst over PCIe 4.0, M.2 NVMe drives can operate at approaching 8 GB a second. In practice today, almost all NVMe M.2 SSDs and adapter cards are PCIe 3.0 or 4.0. These Glowtrends cards, for example, are both PCIe 4.0. So they will respectively allow a PCIe 4.0 NVMe drive to operate at just under 2 and 8 gigabytes per second. However, the motherboards into which I'm going to be plugging these cards in this video are both PCIe 3.0, like the majority of motherboards still in use today. And so the maximum speeds we'll be able to measure will be just under 1 and 4 gigabytes per second. The NVMe drive we're going to be using is also PCIe 3.0 and is rated at about 3.5 gigabytes a second. So it should actually operate at full speed in the Times 4 card, but not in the Times 1 card. We will see. Just before we do some testing, it's worth noting that there are PCIe adapter cards with two and even four M.2 slots. So, if you want to add multiple M.2 drives with a PCIe card, this is perfectly possible. Also, do note that NVMe support was first introduced in Windows 8. So, if you're still running Windows 7, an M.2 NVMe PCIe card like these is not going to work. Right, let's now fit our Western Digital Black NVMe SSD into our Times1 M.2 PCIe adapter card. And uh, this is still fitted with the full-size PCIe bracket it came with, but you might have noticed there's also a half-height bracket which you can fit if you're working in a smaller case. But uh, for now I'll just take out the screw and we can fit the drive in at an angle like uh, that and uh, push it down, put the screw back in there we go. So we'll now mount this in the computer. And if we now boot up and go across to the desktop, we can test the speed here in Crystal Disk Mark. And as we can see, the results are what we would expect when accessing a PCIe 3.0 NVMe drive using just one PCIe lane with read-write speed a little below the theoretical maximum of one gigabyte a second and about one quarter of a drive's rated speed. And it's also worth noting that performance is still substantially faster than a SATA drive. Next, let's try the same SSD in our Times 4 card, which as you may remember comes with a heat sink as well as a heat pad to fit it with and even little rubber bands and clips to help fit it really securely. And I know there's a lot of debate about whether you need to fit a heatsink on an M.2 SSD. And it all really depends on the speed of the drive, where it's going to be fitted, and the interface it's actually going to be used, which will determine how fast the drive actually operates. So, for example, when a drive is in a times one adapter card as we've just seen, a heatsink should not be needed, as the drive will not get that hot in a reasonably ventilated case. But for driving a Times 4 adapter card, a heatsink ought to be fitted to the drive if both the drive and the card and also the PCIe slot are all PCIe 4.0, as this will allow a maximum data transfer speed approaching 8 gigabytes per second, and that is rather fast. However, here, our drive and the PCIe slot we're going to fit this card into are PCIe 3.0. So even though this is a PCIe 4.0 adapter card, the theoretical maximum speed the drive will operate at will be uh, just under 4 gigabytes a second. And hence, a heatsink is not essential in a well-ventilated case. Although, if you've got a heatsink available, it's always worth fitting it, well, if it's available. This said, right here, I'm not going to be fitting this heatsink 
on the drive because this is just a quick test. So let's fit this in the card. And if we now fit this into a computer, and in this instance, this is a situation where the motherboard's already got one M.2 slot, which is already occupied. So we're going to be adding another with our adapter card. And uh, as you can probably see here, we've got two times one PCIe slots and one times 16. We don't have a three times four slot, but the times 16 slot is free because this computer uses integrated graphics. So we can fit our times four card into this times 16 slot. So uh, let's do that. And if we now go across to the desktop, we can again run a test in Crystal Disk Mark. And there we are. All is well with the drive operating four times faster than in the last test, as it's now being accessed over all four of its PCIe lanes. And this is allowing our PCIe 3.0 SSD to operate at full speed. Greetings! Shall we now move on to the more straightforward subject of M.2 USB external enclosures, where I purchased this Orico, which again takes a PCIe NVMe SSD. And uh, having one around is going to make my life so much easier, I should have got one of these ages ago. Anyway, this cost me uh, £18.99, or it sells for $19.99 in the United States, although the price does vary depending on what type of USB cable you want in the box. And note that I've listed everything I've shown in the video description and on my US and UK Amazon storefronts, from which I do earn a commission. So let's open this up. I think we just flick it over and uh, pull the top of the box. Very, very easy unboxing. And uh, oh, it's upside down, look. Oh dear, and it'll come over. There we are. Oh, there we are. Exciting things. We have a USB cable. I went for a A to C. You've also got some little grommet things. These are important. We'll look at those in a second. And also down here, I see we've got a heat sink and a thermal pad to apply the heat sink. And then uh, here, this is obviously the unit itself, which is uh, aluminium and plastic. You can buy these in different colors. As you can see, I went for, for the blue. And I think in theory, what we do to get inside is to unclip the end somehow. It sort of slides and uh, yes, it does and pulls off. And uh, oh, I've done it. And yes, that was straightforward, wasn't it? So uh, let's put this down over here, all the magic of filmmaking, and we can now fit our drive. I think what we do is we put the drive in like that, then we take one of these little rubber grommety things and drop that into the end of here, which is quite fiddly, holds in something like that, and then in theory that pushes down and that drops in there and holds it in place. It does. Why? Many of the manufacturers of these types of products don't like a screw there, I don't know. That's, that works, but it's not anywhere near as good as just putting in a screw. Anyway, we could now fit the heat sink. We would take the pad and take the uh, backing off the pad and put that on there and put the heat sink on top like that. But I'm not gonna do that again for just a quick test. So I'll just get rid of that for now. And uh, if I can, there we are. And so what we need to do now is to take the cover and slide it on like a uh, that and then we hold it in place with the end piece which just drops in and clicks there we are so if we just take the cable there is a thing there we are usb-c at this end that will plug in like that so if we take this and plug it into a computer we can run another crystal disk mark test and as this runs i should note that the orico enclosure is usb 3.2 gen 2 which offers a 10 gigabit per second connection. And so right now it is plugged into a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, or what we used to call USB 3.1. And there we are, our final result, which is just a bit better than the Times 1 PCIe adapter card. But things will be slower if we use the standard USB 3.0 port otherwise known, at least this week, as USB 3.2 Gen 1. So, let's close Crystal Disk Mark, eject the drive, and plug it back in into a standard USB 3.0 port, and repeat the test. And, as we can see, we do get a lower performance, and indeed surprisingly low, 
if still in many ways a perfectly decent data transfer speed. So there we are. I'm now well equipped to handle M.2 NVMe SSDs off motherboard. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the things it's possible to do with something like this or like this is to use it to help you clone an M.2 system drive to another M.2 SSD. And guess what? In a forthcoming video, I'm going to be looking at free cloning applications. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.